everyone, and welcome to Earth Science Review. I'm Mr. Gasta. I'll be your host today. I want to start out by saying this is not the only review you should be doing. This is kind of a basic overview. Do not rely just on this. You have a lot of other materials. Study. You ready? Part one, weather and climate. Here we go. Here we have low pressure. You want to know how do winds move around a low pressure? Here we go, counterclockwise and in. Around a high pressure, they move outward and clockwise. First, we need to know to remember that is air moves from high to low and wants to reach, e reach equilibrium, so that's why it moves out of a high and into a low. And the direction, how do you remember clockwise, counterclockwise? You ready for it? You ready? This is the phrase that pays right here. The clock is high and the counter is low. No way. Next, weather instrument right here. What's the name of it? What does it measure? It's called an anemometer and it measures wind speed. Next, here we have a air pressure or ISO bars uh, showing air pressure, low pressure. Uh, they may ask where would wind speed be fastest? You're looking for where the lines are closest together. That's where the gradient will be highest and where is that here? Right there. Winds will be fastest there. Another uh, showing sea level air pressure. You may be asked where's the high pressure, where's the low pressure? Uh, you want to look at the ISO bars here. And it may look like this, high pressure, low pressure. That tells us something about the weather. Low pressure is bad weather, cloudy, possibly rainy. High pressure is clear, nicer weather. Uh, where would the wind perhaps be fastest? Again, where the gradient is highest, isobars closest together, maybe around here. So you want to know high pressure is usually good weather, high pressure Happy weather, H's match up, low pressure, lousy weather. There you go, know it. Here we have the hydrologic cycle, infiltration into the ground, or if it doesn't infiltrate, the water runs off. A lot of this is stuff that you know, but this is where kids get tripped up. A tree giving off water vapor into the air, what's that called? Very good. Transpiration, good job. Good job. Here, we're showing lake effect snow, or how that happens. This is in the winter time. The water, due to its high specific heat, will be warmer than the air. So we have cool air comes over the water. It warms, picks up moisture, and now warm air can hold more moisture than cool air. As it hits the land here, uh, it rises and it cools. The land is cooler. So then it cools, reaches this dew point. You get a lot of snow right over here. It's called lake effect snow. And we see this in New York in areas such as, uh, as the wind goes across Lake Ontario, you see lake effect snow kind of all over here. You see lake effect snow over here coming off, coming off Lake Erie as well. Fronts, weather fronts. Here we have a cold front. And what you have, this is a CP, continental polar, coming into a maritime tropical air mass. Cold air moving into warm air. This is the front of cold air as it moves into warm, so it's a cold front. The weather you have is, notice the clouds get forced right upward. As any time air rises, it cools. Cold air can hold less moisture than warm air. It cools till it reaches its dew point. That is the temperature at which the uh, water vapor will condense into liquid, and you get clouds. Notice, they're very high, but not wide, so you have heavy rain, but uh, kind of a short period of heavy rain. So your cold front, you can really tell this steep nose right here, and again, it's the front of the cold air. You gotta know that, know that. As opposed to the other main type of front, in this case, is a warm front, and now we're moving the other direction here, and we have warm air, it's the front of warm air as it overtakes or moves uh, over cool air, because the cool air is denser, the warm air goes up. Notice, uh, it's not as, uh, uh, it's a more gradual slope, and you have a wider area of clouds, and you have a wider area of rain, though the rain is not as heavy at a warm front. That's the kind of weather that you have, and I wrote it in here. Warm front, your gradual slope, and your wider area of clouds. Know that as well. 
this weather stuff um, really, I think, drives kids a bit crazy. It is not easy, uh, so you really need to study. It is not like rocks where we've done rocks from here to there, and you know rocks uh, pretty well. This stuff it always causes kids trouble, and this is where kids do the probably do the worst. So uh, you just study it more. Here we have the U.S., and what we're focused on here is how uh, planetary winds move, and that tends to push weather. So you often see weather kind of moving this way from the southwest, or in some cases, you know, kind of f straight from the west. That's how weather moves, and how would you know that if you're asked that? Well, the where to look. Yes, you're right. Reference table, page 14, I believe, lower left. I believe it's 14. It's this chart right here. Um, and where you would look is New York, if you place it, find a reference table, it's in the 40s latitude, 41, 42, 43, is between 30 and 60, it's in here. Where do the planetary winds come from? From the southwest. Uh, you need to use this uh, page of the reference table at times. Know it. Okay, we've come to the end of this segment. Uh, this is, was weather and climate one, and we're going to be followed by more weather and climate, appropriately titled weather and climate two. So on behalf of uh, myself and Fred, see you next episode.